Welcome to this week's Ag Update. I'm Nate Eitzman, sales agronomist for Osmus Farm Supply. This week I'll be talking about Northern Corn Leaf Blight, or NCLB. NCLB is the most consistently damaging leaf disease in the Northern Corn Belt. The fungus that causes NCLB overwinters in corn residue and spores are dispersed by wind and splashing water. Disease development is favored by moderate temperatures of 64 to 81 degrees and wet, humid conditions. NCLB requires a minimum of six hours of leaf moisture for infection to occur. Lesions will typically form seven to 12 days after infection. With the recent moisture and temperatures we have experienced, we can expect to see a noticeable increase in NCLB lesions in our cornfields in the next seven to 10 days. NCLB lesions are large, elliptical, one to six inch long cigar or canoe shaped lesions that are gray green at first but then turn pale gray or tan. They typically begin on lower leaves and move up through the corn canopy. If lesions are found above the ear leaf prior to tassel, severe yield loss can occur. After heavy infection the last two years, inoculum levels are high. Infection can be expected with the right environmental conditions. Northern corn leaf blight has already been reported in numerous fields across Iowa and even in southern Minnesota. There are three types of management practices to help reduce or control NCLB. The first management practice is resistance. There are two types of resistant genes available in corn hybrids today. Plants with resistant genes can still be infected by NCLB, but the lesions will typically be smaller and will not sporulate. The second option is cultural practices. Inoculum levels can be reduced by rotating crops and reducing surface residue with tillage. The third option for managing NCLB would be fungicides. Fungicides are probably the most effective method of control and should be considered if scouting and environmental conditions indicate the potential for disease development is high. For fungicide recommendations, contact your local AFS agronomist. Thanks for watching this week's Agronomy Update.